I'm going to introduce you to the hook restriction program in conjunction with using a Kong. So I'm just going to use Dita here to show you how we can use this in an array of different situations. So Dita. Oh, what's this? Good boy. Lovely. On your bed. <clears throat> Down. Good boy. I'm just going to give him the Kong there now, take off the lead that I had on and replace that with the lead that was already affixed to the hook. Good boy. Controlling your dog in certain situations around the home can be difficult. So in which of those situations are we able to use the hook restriction programme? A useful example is when people call at the door. We've all been to houses whereby the dogs are slightly out of control, perhaps jumping on the sofa, pestering the guest. The owner then reacts to the dog constantly by either shouting at the dog or physically pulling the dog around or having to remove the dog to another room. So with the hook, that can condition the dog to a new set of rules when the visitor arrives. Another situation that you may find useful to use the Kong is when you're busy around the house, for example, cooking an evening meal. Some people find that the dog is pacing around, causing a danger in the kitchen, and that can be a really useful time to use the hook restriction programme. When dogs have been exhibiting the same behaviour for a period of time, when we start to teach them new ways to respond to different situations, it can be quite difficult to break those embedded routines. So with the hook restriction programme, using the dog's daily food allowance of a natural wet food stuffed inside the Kong is a really useful way to induce the dog to enjoy this new training technique. So imagine somebody came to the front door. You'll need to put a lead on the dog. Dogs are very conditioned to follow the lead. And rather than having to drag the dog to the bed or give excess commands that the dog's not responding to, bearing in mind that there is actually somebody waiting at the door to be let in, and then transfer that lead onto the lead that you have attached to the hook. In this instance, Dieter's here on his bed. He likes relaxing on his bed um, during the evening time, so it's a logical step to have the hook next to his bed so that we can induce him to relax in that position. However, there are other alternatives. You don't have to use the dog's bed. Many people place the hook in their hallway, depending on the size of the hallway, so that you can be much quicker to put the dog onto the hook and allow people to enter the house. But it does very much depend on the size of the rooms that you have available to you. For example, what you don't want is when people come in that they have the dog as an obstacle and therefore have to either negotiate the dog, stepping over the lead, um, which may cause problems. You really want the dog in a non-walkthrough area of the house. You can have more than one hook in the house depending on the size of the house and for the situations in which you're going to use it. Uh, one useful example again is people that work from home and find that the dog can be disruptive during perhaps conference calls or when they're on the telephone and having a hook maybe in your office or another part of the house whereby you can take the dog and put the dog onto the hook and give him the powerful food reward is particularly useful. And of course over a period of time we'll start to introduce the command of stay on the bed or on, in the location of the hook so that the dog starts to learn a new command. The psychology and power of food. You'll see I've already stuffed a Kong for Dita and it's always good practice to have maybe one or two Kongs that you've pre-prepared that you can keep in the fridge that you can bring out if you have a visitor unexpectedly. And I use the Kong to guide the dog onto the bed. So instead of having a battle, I use a natural wet food. Dry dog food does not work in this process. The natural wet food is much more appealing to dogs. It's a natural diet for dogs and it's what they eat. And dogs very much tend to prefer that to many of the processed pet foods. So I use the natural diet, lead the dog over to the bed, so him following his nose onto the bed, and then having a very powerful reward. 
For many dogs, rushing to the front door and being a nuisance with visitors is a really rewarding activity. The dog enjoys that and with hundreds of repetitions behind them, we need something incredibly powerful to start undoing that learning. So I use all of the dog's daily food allowance as opposed to trying to use treats to induce the same behaviour. So once the dog becomes aware that all food comes in this situation, rather than being delivered in a bowl for them to gulp down in five or ten seconds, as many dogs do, the dogs quickly learn that being on the hook, on the bed, if that's how you choose to have the hook, is a really rewarding, enjoyable time. Let me give you a plan for how we start to condition the dog to this method of training. There's no use just waiting for the first visitor to arrive and then trying to arrange the dog yourself and your Kong. Have some practice time before that. So it's useful to get the dog conditioned to understand what's going to be expected. So I use all of the dog's daily food allowance, split up into maybe two or three portions per day, and then all food is put into the Kong and fed in this situation. So when the dog is restricted to the hook, that's when he receives all of his daily food allowance and that brings about a really powerful reward for this training. So when your first visitor does arrive or you're using this training method in another situation that I've alluded to, then the dog will be somewhat conditioned to A, extract the food from the Kong and be more settled whilst being restricted in that part of the house. So when they arrive at the door, the dog already will be more focused on you, particularly if you pick up the Kong. The dog will have made a strong link in his mind that the Kong is a really exciting, nice thing, a nice event in the day, and therefore that will aid any retraining that you wish to do using this. So time and food consumption and why this method works so well. The Kong is used to prolong the time that it takes for the dog to extract the food. So for example, it should take 20 to 30 minutes perhaps, depending on how you stuff the Kong, for the dog to extract the food. And that's 20 or 30 minutes that enables you to A, greet your guest, perhaps make coffee, allow them to sit down, you can sit down, talk to them, and all of that time the dog is focused not on the guest, not on the changing situation, but simply on extracting food, which is a normal behaviour for dogs. Furthermore, when the dog has finished extracting all of the food from the Kong, some dogs are quite tired by that, and therefore they may have a little sleep. The majority of dogs will have become used to the presence of your visitor, used to the presence of the voice, so the situation is no longer new and exciting. So when it does come to release the dog free into the house, to interact with the visitor or to see the visitor, then the excitement is reduced greatly. There are two main ways to release the dog from the hook. So the first one, of course, is simply to unclip the lead from the dog's collar and allow the dog loose. The other method is to remove the lead from the hook and allow the dog to trail that around the house. And the reason for doing that is some dogs that are particularly overbearing with visitors and very excited, then that will enable you to have more control. So that instead of having to physically manage the dog, you can simply pick up the lead and guide the dog either back to you or you can place the dog back on the hook for another period of time. The vast majority of dogs very quickly become used to this method and therefore when released from the hook are much calmer and much more relaxed. However, for a minority of dogs, dogs that have had huge amounts of repetition and are very overbearing with guests, you may need to leave them on the hook for a slightly longer period of time before releasing them. This is probably one of the most successful programs for changing a dog's negative behaviour into a positive one. And of course you should be obedience training your dog both inside the home and outside of the home. When we consider things from the dog's point of view, when people arrive at the door, it can often escalate. So for the dog, it's really exciting. It's a high point of the day. Someone coming to the house stimulates their excitement. And if we allow them to come into the house, we allow the guests to come into the house, people often have to react to your dog by physically touching the dog because it leaves them no choice. Um, it may be jumping up or it may just be pushing into them for attention and affection. 
and owners also respond to the dog, usually giving a flurry of attention and affection, trying to grab hold of the dog, giving commands, apologising to the guest while simultaneously talking to the dog. And the dog gets all of these hugely powerful rewards when people come, and that maintains and fuels the very behaviour that we don't want. So using the hook method, along with using the lead, removes all of that so that we can provide some clarity for the dog and start actually rewarding the very behaviour that we want. People often ask how long this needs to be employed for and that varies greatly depending on the dog. However, once you have a dog that goes over towards the hook as opposed to runs to the front door, ready to receive the reward in this situation rather than the previous reward at the front door, then that's your marker that you need to work to. Thank you.